with that intro, um, yeah, a couple of years ago, some colleagues and I left NASA to, um, to build satellites to image the Earth on a super frequent basis. And uh, we were building ultra-compact satellites, and we thought of a lot of tremendous humanitarian and commercial applications of imaging the Earth on a really rapid basis. And, and so, just to give you a little bit about uh, why, uh, this is what we really care about. You've seen it before, our little planet. We call it Spaceship Earth, because it is a spaceship itself. Um, and we need to take care of it. It's got finite resources and, and all the things that you know and, and care about. Um, and we, we, with ubiquitous satellite imaging, that is really frequent imaging of the entire planet, can do all sorts of great things to help us to steward this planet, including monitoring deforestation, monitoring the ice caps melting, helping people in developing countries improve agricultural yield, um, helping people in the cases of disaster response, like floods, fires, and so forth. And what we recognized was that we could, with ultra-compact little satellites, launch a lot of them, and by imaging the Earth on a much more frequent basis, do something that wasn't possible before in terms of being able to uh, not just be aware of the changing planet, but actually be able to get inside the dis human decision-making loop such that we could help human action. So we cared about not just awareness of the planet so that we can all know that we're screwing up the Amazon or so forth, but rather so that we can do something about it on an active basis. So this is what our system looks like, just to give you an, a bit of an overview. So we have the satellite segment, um, uh, ground stations. We have um, a, a, a huge data pipeline that trans translates it from raw imagery into useful imagery products. And then we're putting it out to various users, um, it, firstly to enterprise users, secondly to, through an open API for folks like you guys to hack on our data, and I'll be touching more on that in a minute, and then products uh, that we put together on, and services on that data ourselves. So. This is what one of our satellites looks like. This is one of the ones that was launched earlier in the year. It's a really ultra-compact satellite. It's blown up here, so you think it's huge, but it's actually only yay big. <laughs> um, and this one gives a, a, a little bit more perspective. So literally, these are 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters in dimension. So they're tiny little satellites, but they've got a lot of bang for the buck. Um, and we launched the first two as demonstration satellites in April earlier this year, and they both worked beautifully. And, and in fact, even though they were the smallest and most compact Earth imaging satellites ever, um, they, they carried much more um, up-to-date technology because we took a high, we're taking a high-risk approach with our satellites, so we just take the latest and greatest um, capabilities and stuff them into this little form factor. So it turns out that, for example, this, these satellites that we launched uh, on two different rockets, one from Russia and one from the US, um, had the fastest processor of any satellite ever launched, even though they were yay big. They also had more memory, uh, like hard drive space, than any satellites ever launched before. Because we took the latest stuff, whereas a, a lot of the space sector takes a very conservative approach and only launches technology that has definitely been tested in orbit before. By making them so small and compact, we can uh, take risks by putting up a lot more, we can have uh, redundancy in the system, so if a couple die, it's not the end of the world, as opposed to trying to make each satellite 99.999% um, uh, likely to, to work. And so we take a different um, approach. So this is the very first image that we got down from our first demo satellite. It's um, in just outside uh, Portland, Oregon. You can see it's a deforested, it's a forested region there. And one of the things we said that we, could, we would be able to do is to see individual trees. We were extremely pleased to see that we could see individual trees on this image um, because we hope to be able to track deforestation, literally count every tree on the planet every day. This is what it looks like when we put that into Google Earth. I actually want to flip back and forth a little bit. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but um, if you can go back. There we go. 
So if you just sl flip back and forth between these images, you can see our image overlaid on the Google Earth image. And um, it's just slightly higher resolution than the Google image in that area. Um, it turns out uh, the imagery in Google Earth and the other such applications varies in, in resolution a lot by location. Um, but the much more interesting thing is that it's much more recent. Um, the Google Earth image is, is a couple of years old, and ours was from that day. Um, we also caught a little bit of deforestation up in the top left-hand corner, which we, we were pleased about as well. Um, here's another image that we took, the second image that we downloaded, which also um, showed something interesting, which was that the river had moved just in the time between the images that were taken um, before and the images we took. Um, this was the first uh, light from our second satellite that we launched um, actually from Russia. Um, it, it, it happened to be over Norway when we uh, turned on the camera, and so this is what it saw, uh, just an ice field, but it was really beautiful, we thought. Um, here's one over a little town in Japan. So, but here's what I want to talk to you guys about, which is that we're going to have a torrent of data, um, because in December we are launching the world's largest constellation of Earth imaging satellites ever, and not by a little way either. Uh, we're launching 30 satellites uh, that will be uh, uh, coming out of the International Space Station, literally popped out by astronauts, and these will be uh, uh, circling the Earth in a single plane and taking pictures of every spot on the Earth on a really regular basis. And with that torrent of data that we will be releasing in sort of uh, early next year, we'll start to release all of that data as it comes out. And we are going to put together uh, uh, a web-based API where everyone uh, can access this data directly. We can think of literally hundreds and thousands of applications of this Earth imaging data. Um, I would mentioned a few, but I, the list goes on and on and on. And, and so, A, it would take a great deal for us to try and exploit all of those apps. Uh, maybe a team of five or ten persons for every app that I could think of, you know, the five or ten people for the deforestation app, five or ten people for the fire detection app, and so forth. And that's just um, it's sort of intractable as a problem for our little company. And secondly, we certainly don't have a monopoly on the best ideas, and so we want to make sure that this data, all the uh, utility that can be uh, had from it, it is in fact exploited. And so, we're going to have this o open access uh, API where everyone can come in and run their own uh, programs on our data, on our servers, um, for whatever application they want to run. And we will be uh, uh, basically hosting a, a few uh, hackathons around that alpha release, of, which will be in early next year. And we really want to see if, uh, um, uh, basically, we're open to the developer community coming along to those hackathons and also the uh, uh, also seeing um, other, if you guys have ideas for how, uh, for companies or for, for humanitarian projects that could start up around this data set, we're really keen to, to have partnerships with, with uh, this kind of community. And that's why I'm here today to t tell you a little bit about it. Um, and so, I just want to um, touch a little bit back on, on some of the satellites. I'm sorry, I want one, one more thing. Um, back on these, these little guys. Um, so, the real game changer here is that because we've made them so compact, we can launch um, hundreds of them um, in, in one launch vehicle. And that's what has made the impact here. And essentially, we're building off the back of a great deal of developments in, in, uh, the, uh, in, in, in smartphones and other consumer electronics. And we're doing the same on the back end with the data, um, building on a lot of the developments that the open source uh, uh, software community has, 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 has done. And so we wanted to... Um, come here to tell you a little bit about our data and open the gate for you guys to collaborate with us when we open our uh, open uh, web-based API in early next year. 
And with that, I'll just leave you with my uh, contact uh, uh, email. And if you're interested in taking part in the hackathons, that, that's the email to just send us a note uh, saying you're interested in that. And um, if you are interested in joining our team, we have a, a greatly expanding team of uh, software engineers uh, dealing with all this torrent of data. Uh, we're open to your applications. Uh, thank you very much.